Peace and love, my people. I'm back. I'm trying something with this phone. I'm going to push this phone to the outer limits, okay? Right now, I have a file that I just did that's 48 minutes long, right? <laughs> I have a 48-minute long file on this thing. I'm going to see how far I can get and continue reading this stuff, right? About Asar and his murder by Seth. Okay? And I'll see where I get before the phone cuts off on me, okay? <laughs> so, the feast was broken up in great confusion as the followers of Set fell upon the people with their weapons to take over the government. Set commanded his followers to take the chest away and dispose of it in a secret place. They hastened through the thick cover of darkness and flung it into the Nile, okay? The Nile. Okay, the Nile's current took it to the open ocean and it was presumed lost forever on the bottom of the ocean. And that is the funerary um, box with Osset's, I mean, Osar's body in it. Osar is in it. He was tricked in it and it was closed down on him and he was uh, smothered. And killed by set okay there are levels so that's saying then that the spirit of the set within us wants to put down the high spirit within us you know and we'll go to extremes to uh, uh, put that thing out right to to kill our higher selves so that we are forever doomed to living in a lower self Talk about that, okay? An allusion to the fact that the indwelling intelligence is hidden away from most people in the subconscious, the bottom of the ocean. This is why meditation, which is a process of taking the consciousness into the subconscious, okay? While retaining full consciousness. So you can go into the subconscious, remaining conscious, okay? That's what meditation does. You don't fall asleep. You don't go unconscious. You understand what you're doing. You know what you're doing. And, it's, and hypnotism is that too, you know, if you're not afraid of it. It's essential. This Doing this is essential in religious work, okay? In, in those high-level religions. There are other religions that don't want you doing this. <laughs> they don't want you doing this at all. The indwelling intelligence builds up the spirit, mind, and body of the individual from the moment of conception. Although it is restricted to managing involuntary vegetative functions of being, it is the major influence in life. During our infancy, although the dormancy of the intellectual faculties prevent it from expressing itself in the thinking of children, yet its influence is to be seen in their absence of evil, hate, and such qualities. And that's how you know. As children grow, their minds are taken over by the lower intellect, okay, which totally eclipses the indwelling intelligence, okay? This is set killing Asar. That's what that is, metaphorically speaking. Set killing our sorrow when the lower self rise it up, rises up within us and wants to block out the higher self. You see it real early in children when we call what we call it the terrible twos, when they become just really greedy, selfish, and you know, wicked kind of <laughs> two year olds or something else. Okay, <laughs> and you know, that's just the nature of who we are as human beings. That happens automatically almost. So that you have to do the spiritual work in order to bring that back. That's just the way it's set up, okay? This is set killing Osar, especially if their behavior is characterized by deception. In the life of nations and the history of the world, we find the same progression from innocence to wickedness. Okay, so back to the story. When the bad news regarding Osar's fate was taken to Osset, she was stricken with great sorrow. She wept bitterly and could not be consoled. In her grief, she cut off a lock of her hair, put on mourning clothes, and vowed to never rest until she found the body of her beloved king and husband. Okay? 
Now, the commentary on that is, we will see in the first stage of initiation that the experiencing of genuine sorrow over the restriction of the indwelling divinity to maintaining the involuntary vegetative subconscious functions of the body and mind and the dedication of oneself to expanding its functions to ruling the external aspects of our lives is the first requirement for spiritual upliftment. So let me restate that. What we need to do as the first level of our initiation into the spiritual realm is to take that Okay, take that energy down into that subconscious place to reach to the higher self, okay, so that that higher energy is not only just beating your heart, okay, digesting your food, but it's also ruling your subconscious, I mean your conscious, okay, and so the... How you know that's happening is your intuition is awakening up, awakening, okay? You are able to manifest things. You are able, you see things going on, spiritual things, you know. You're awakening that higher level or you're bringing it up. You're bringing it to the forefront. You, you're pushing down the, the, the setian aspect, the, the, the evil aspect within you, the evil aspect within you, okay? Right, that's a battle. Okay, <laughs> let's see. To expanding its functions to ruling the external aspects of our lives. You know, just the way we live our lives, not just our heartbeat, but the way we live our lives. I mean, the intelligence is such that it can keep your heart beating. That it must be intelligence. It is. It's divine intelligence. But you have the free will to put in that hard work to bring it to the forefront of your life so that it's ruling everything you do. Not just your heartbeat, but the way you move in the world. <laughs> your the, What kind of work you do in your life, you know. It's just ruled by that kind of divine intelligence. It seems like if that's ruling your life, then you can't do nothing but win. <laughs> so, this is important for many people, for many people deceive themselves with the conviction that they are spiritual yet experienced no remorse over their acts that kept the divinity from rising in their being. Okay, you got to feel remorse. Okay, you got to feel bad for having lived that kind of way. All right, and that's the first level, according to the Ron Nefer Amen. If you don't feel remorse for that, if you don't feel sorry, then you haven't fulfilled your first level of initiation. So, she searched... I said, search everywhere, question everyone she met, and when it seemed that all was in vain, she met up with some children who told her that they had seen the chest floating down the Nile and entering the sea. So, this is the commentary on that. What does that mean? While the first step towards spiritual development is the experiencing of genuine sorrow over the lowly condition of the divinity within, the second evidence of spirituality is being driven to find the true spiritual way. Driven. You know what I see? Many of us, many of us are driven to find the true spiritual way. You are on your path, okay? Okay. <laughs> You are on your path, okay? It, it, it takes over your entire life, okay? And, it, and as well it should, okay? Their life force has not yet... Okay, let's see. A reference to the psychic openness of children. Okay, the fact that children saw the chest. A reference to the psychic openness of children. Their life force has not yet been dissipated in sexual activity. And they have not yet been corrupted by social and setian fallacies. Not yet. Okay. Depending on their life. There are some children who go through hell real early. Although they cannot clearly and fully express it, divine influence works greatly through them. That's interesting. Okay. So, continuing the story. Meanwhile, Set usurped the throne of Osar and reigned over the land of Kamet, 
Law and order, which followed from the moral upliftment of the people, was replaced by the use of force. Everywhere, men were robbed of their possessions and land through legal unjust means. Once owners, they were now renters and wage earners. Tyranny and the law of might prevailed as the divine law was repealed. Everywhere, the followers of Asar who lived by Ma'at were persecuted. So, secularism and a distorted religion replaces the true religion. Heru-Ur should have opposed Set, but didn't because of his blindness, okay? So that Heru, that, that part of yourself within you that should fight against Set and his usurpation of your higher self. Heru the blind, he couldn't see it, okay? He was blind, so he couldn't, he couldn't put forth that heroic energy as yet, okay? So, the good queen mother Osset became a fugitive in her own land, and she fled to conceal herself in Set's own stronghold, the swamps and marshes of the delta, the delta of Lower Kamet. She believed that it was the last place he would dream of ever looking for her in the swamps. Wow, that sounds familiar. Seven scorpions followed her and served as her protectors. Okay, So, that she concealed herself in the stronghold of Set is symbolic of the personality, although devoted to Asar, remains trapped in the Sahu part of the spirit. It also prophesizes that the historical followers of Osar will develop their resistance in Set's cities. The seven scorpions symbolizes the seven popularly known chakras, psychic centers, okay? So back to the story. Ra also came to her aid. Looking down from heaven and seeing her distress, he took pity on her and sent Anpu, also known as Anubis, the son of Osar and Nebet -het to serve as her guide and guard dog. One day, Aset requested shelter at the house of a poor woman, but was refused by the woman who was stricken with fear on seeing the scorpions accompanying her. But a scorpion managed to slip in before the woman closed the door and bit her child, causing his immediate death. To repair the damage, Aset uttered words of power which caused the child to come to life again. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Okay. For which the mother was so grateful that she allowed Offset to stay in her house. Okay. So, Anpu's assistant, back to the commentary, refers to one of the aspects of the eighth sphere, Sebek, the intellect uplifted by Ma'at, which assists the person in her search for God within. Such an intellect also becomes the major psychic protector for the individual, okay? When a person is devoted to resurrecting the indwelling divinity by his or her genuine experiencing of sorrow over its restricted role, a great deal of psychic healing power is awakened, okay? It is also an allusion to the awesome offensive powers residing in the six phenomenal chakras, the psychic centers, they can only be wielded with great success by those who are devoted to God. Okay, let's see, am I going to be able to finish the story? I don't know how much energy this phone is going to have. <laughs> okay, the coffin of Asar was taken by the waves to Byblos, a port city in southern Syria, and it was cast on the shore. A tree sprang up and grew around it, enclosing the body of Osar in his trunk. News of this tree, which grew so rapidly and of such beauty, came to the king of this alien land, and he commanded that it should be cut down, and its trunk brought to him. He erected it as a pillar in his house, without knowing the great secret it contained within. An allusion to the exportation of the Osarian religion and the tree of life to Palestine and Syria. They received it, but never fully understood the true secrets it held within. It also informs us that in seeking spiritual instruction, given Seth's dominance at home, 
we will have to search in foreign lands and people. A revelation came to Osset in her dreams that she might find Osar's body in Byblos. So she set off towards Syria by ship. When she arrived, she dressed as a commoner and sat beside a well, weeping bitterly. Wow, that sounds familiar, though. The woman by the well? Mm. At the well, she befriended, you know, <laughs> okay. At the well, she befriended the queen's handmaidens, whose hair she braided. Into each lock, she breathed a sweet and unique perfume. They went back to the palace and told their queen of this woman who had the strange power of exhaling and exuding perfume from her breath and body. The queen commanded that she should be brought immediately before her. Osset found favor in the eyes of the queen who made her the nurse to one of her sons. Wow, that sounds familiar, don't it? Don't that sound familiar? The importance of dreams in those who are devoted to reawakening the dead God within. A reference to the spiritual powers developed by those who are devoted to the resurrection of the Osar faculty within. Okay, that is when she uh, befriended the queen's handmaidens. Okay, when she came to, when she got the dream to come to, to go to Byblos. I mean, the information came right to her in a dream. You know, we talk about the ancestors coming to us in dreams, right? All right, so let's finish. Osset refused to nurse the child and to silence his cries for milk. She put her finger into his mouth. Instead of milk, at night she caused him to be enveloped in a sacred fire, which should confer immortality to, which would confer immortality to the child. In the meantime, she transformed herself into a swallow and flew to where the pillar containing the body of Osar was kept and uttered loud cries of sorrow while flying around it. While she was thus engaged, the queen came by and saw the babe surrounded by the flame and snatched him from it, denying him thus of immortality. Aset transformed herself back into human form and confessed to the queen who she was and the purpose of her mission. She then asked the king that the pillar be given to her. The king granted her request and she cut deep into the trunk and took out the chest which she wrapped in linen and anointed with myrrh. The empty pillar was, wow, let's, let's, she wrapped in linen and anointed with myrrh, which is mummification, right? Wow, okay. <clears throat> the empty pillar was returned to the king who erected it as a monument to Osset. And for many centuries, it was worshipped by the people of Byblos. Okay, the commentary. Imagine oneself as different creatures, persons, etc. Imagining oneself as different creatures, persons, etc. while in trance is an important practice in spiritual development. What you imagine doing in trance is taken by the spirit as reality. It is thus that powers are developed and limiting conditions are transcended. This is why the Pert M. Heru, the Tibetan yoga system, and so on, prescribe such visualizations to be practiced by the initiate. The empty pillar became the tree of life of the Canaanite, and later on of the Jews. It was empty because they did not receive the full teachings. Okay, but back to the story. Osset returned by ship with the coffin accompanied by Maneros, the king's firstborn. While at sea, Osset could not wait to see Osar, so she opened the chest and embraced the corpse and wept bitterly. Meanwhile, the boy Maneros had secretly stolen behind her to see what was in the chest and what was going on. She turned suddenly and the fire in her eyes caused the boy to die of fright and he fell into the sea. Okay, this is an allusion to the great psychic powers developed by the persona when it beholds and interacts with Osar, the indwelling divine intelligence in mediumistic trance. Wow, that's deep. 
and plus that sounds familiar. She turned suddenly and fire in her eyes caused the boy to die of fright and he fell into the sea. It sounds familiar, okay? When I set reach the land, it sounds like the pillar of salt, okay, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. When I set reach the land of Kamet, she took the body and according to the pyramid text number 632 and 1636 and murals at Abydos and Philae, she transformed herself into a swallow and hovered over the dead body causing a wind with her wings and raised the wary phallus of the silent hearted, which is dead, and received his seed. Thus was Heru conceived. Okay, okay, what does that mean? Aset's conception of Heru by no living man, okay, immaculate conception, is the oldest documented version of immaculate conception. Okay, she conceived Heru, but not by a living man because Osar was dead. Okay, it is no secret that the concept of the Virgin Mary and Jesus originated in this story. Everybody knows this. Okay, it's no secret. Okay, this is why there were thousands, now about a hundred, of black virgins all over Europe. Okay, they can still be found in the Vatican and the Polish Cathedral of the present Pope, okay, the Black Virgins, the statues of Black Virgins, okay? People can't explain that away, okay? There were thousands of these Black Virgins, okay? Statues of the Virgin Mother, but it was black. It was, she was made black. Her skin was black, okay? Before the racism tried to erase that fact, back in those old days, they, they carved those uh, statuettes and made them black, okay? Look it up, black virgin, okay? <laughs> All over Europe, they said. Hunt, now there's a hundred, according to this book at the time it was written. And they're probably disappeared by now. Black virgins all over Europe. They can still be found in the, Vat in the Vatican. Okay. <laughs> They're in the Vatican. Okay. All right. It's like the Smithsonian Institute and the Library of Congress. They take those rich things of other nations. What is called booty. Stolen, stolen wealth. And then they hide it inside of their Vaticans. Inside of their... Smithsonian's and inside of their libraries of Congress and stuff of that nature, okay? In another version of the story, she conceived and gave birth to Heru before setting out to Syria to find Osar. See, there's more than one version of the story. After all, it's a very ancient story, okay? When Set heard about it, he set out in persecution of the newborn heir to the throne. Don't that sound like, uh, what was that thing? What that sounds like in the Bible, uh what was what was his name? Her Herod, yes. King Herod chasing after Jesus and destroying all the two year olds in the land. Okay, that's the same story, okay? <laughs> so that just goes to show you that a lot of what you understand of the story in the Bible is is not new, okay? Alright. So when Set heard about it, he set out in persecution of the newborn heir to the throne. Hearing that he was coming, Aset hid him in Buto under the protection of Watchet. An analysis of the entire story will show that it cannot fit in coherently with the logic of the story. It is important to note it because, one, it reveals the role of the psychic powers symbolized as Watchet and Nekhebet in the protection of the underdeveloped. And when I be reading those definitions, they're saying it's psychic energy. Watchet and Nekabet are psychic energies. In fact, let me just look in the book and see if I can. It's the serpent. Overcoming the, uh, the sun. There's a way that that's said. Let me see. Where is it? I need 
need to pull out my deck and leave it out. Wow, my phone is here. It 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 is here's Kepera. Kepera right there. Kepera. Here they all are. Here it is. Here's Watchet. Okay, and Nekebet. Okay, you see that? Nekebet and Watchet. Two parts of the uh, the snake, the tail end of the snake and the, the the top part of the snake. Okay, which is representative of psychic energy. Very very interesting. Okay, I'm I'm still learning, still learning when it comes to that. Okay, very very. I like even saying the two names: Watchet and Nekhebet. Under the protection of Watchet. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to the story. She then hid the body in a secret place and hastened to Buto in the city of Chemis to give birth to her son Heru. Her triumph was short-lived. While she was in Buto, Set came hunting the boar at the full moon in the marshy swamps of the delta and by accident found the chest. Recognizing it, he opened it and took the body of Osar and cut it into 14 pieces and scattered them in various parts of the country. Wow, he found him by accident. What does that mean, okay? The breaking of the body of Osar symbolizes the fragmentation of consciousness by the left side of the brain, which leads to a segregated view of the world. The 14 pieces also correspond to the 14 psychic centers, chakras, of the spiritual body, the dispersion of the pieces of the body of Osar is the origin of the religious doctrine of the diaspora, the dispersion of the elect. Wow, okay, my phone is pushing, okay. All right, on hearing about Set's deed, Osset set out once again in search of the members of Osar's body to pieces. This time, accompanied by her sister, Nebet Het, who, until then, was married to Set. I think she got a divorce. <laughs> At length, she recovered all the parts except the phallus, which was swallowed by the Lepidotus phagris and the Achirinchus fish. Oxyrhynchus fish. Well, I gotta, I gotta try to understand that. Okay, she buried an image of each member where it was found and erected a tomb, which became a place of worship by the people of the area. Shrines. The existence of the actual members were kept secret so that Set would not resume his search for the body. Okay, what does that mean? Nebet head corresponds to the seventh sphere, the imaginative faculty, also known as Het Heru, which joins the persona in the search for the indwelling divinity. The connection of the fish to the phallus has to do with correspondence of the sexual psychic center of the water element. The parasympathetic division of... Let, let, me, let, let me do that again. The connection of the fish to the phallus has to do with the correspondence of the sexual psychic center to the water element. The parasympathetic division of the autonom autonomous nervous system corresponds to the water element and governs sexual potency. Mm. The point being made, however, is the fact that sexual potency is a key index of spiritual power. Whoa, okay, that's reminding me of uh, Ogun. Or, uh, not a goon. Well, anyway. It must be nurtured and the sexual act moderated for spiritual growth. Okay. She buried an image of each... Okay, I already read that. Set continued his tyrannical rulership over the land, unrelenting in his persecution of the followers of Asar. The people's worship of Asar strengthened his spirit and caused him to appear in a dream to his son Heru, who was now a grown man. He encouraged him 
to regain the throne to which he was the rightful heir and gave him instruction in battle. A reference to the ancestral communication rituals which empowered the deceased to assist their family members on earth as well as the instruction received by the latter to solve their problems. Whoa, okay. Heru gathered his army and went to confront Set, okay. They first met at Edfu where Set's army slew many of the followers of Heru. But Heru and his followers, although greatly outnumbered, resumed the war. His greatest weapon was his faith in the council from Tehuti, whose words were God's words, the Metuneter. They attacked Set again and drove him to the eastern frontier. He was sought he sought refuge at Zaru, where Heru caught up with him. And the last battle of the war ensued. Okay, so this battle's on and going. In this pitched battle that went on for many days, Set gouged out Heru's eye, which would have caused Heru to war had not Tehuti healed it. With his insight, regain insight, okay? Heru managed to castrate Set. Whoa, <laughs> this is a lot. All right. All right, so let's read the commentary. As we will see, ultimately, Set will be defeated through truth. But one must be prepared to stand up to him at all costs and by all means necessary. Without this, you cannot get him to abide by the truth. Heru was defeated because he followed his own head, the intellect. Heru is our sense of freedom and independence. Whoa, okay. His victory came from humbling himself to the intuitive guidance of the wisdom faculty, which is received through perfection in meditation. Okay, so you can't go by your intellect. You can't go by intellect. You got to go by meditation and get that intuitive knowledge, okay? You got to go inward, the higher self, okay? It ain't about what you know. It's about what spirit flows through you. Wow, okay. All right. Or oracles or counsel from a sage. You can either do it meditation or by the oracles or by the counsel from a sage, okay? Tehuti was the sage. Intelligence has always defeated might and steel. As we will see, ultimately Set will be defeated through truth, but one must be prepared to stand up to him at all costs and confront him with all means possible. Without this, you cannot get him to abide by the truth, okay? <laughs> the, okay. The eye of Heru symbolizes the visual thinking of the right side of the brain, which governs understanding and spirituality. It is also a symbol of the omniscience and omnipresence of God as shown in earlier chapters. Thus, it was attacked by Set. The healing of the eye by Tehuti is an allusion to the role that wisdom plays in our life. Likewise, Heru attacked Set in the seat of his uncontrolled aggressiveness, which was he castrated him. <laughs> that's, that's so deep, man. That's just so deep. Okay, I don't think I can keep. Oh, I'm almost finished. Let me finish this. This was the decisive point in the war. Set was defeated, taken prisoner, and condemned to death. Heru turned him over to the Queen Mother of Set for her to administer ju the judgment, but she refused to kill him on the grounds that they were all family and set him loose. Outraged, the impetuous youth cut her head off. Some say her royal diadem, which was replaced by a cow's head or crowned by Tehuti. Although Set had been defeated, Aset and Nebhet were still grieving over the death of Osar. In a chant, Aset exclaimed, Gods and men before the face of gods are weeping for thee at the same time when they behold me. Yes, I invoke thee with wailing that reaches high as heaven, yet you do not hear my voice. I, your sister, loves you more than all the earth, and you love none other more than me. Okay, and Nebethet in her chant exclaims this, Overcome the sorrows in the hearts of us, your sisters. Live before us, desiring to behold you. Okay, so these lamentations of the goddesses were heard by Ra, Lamentations. 
Calm down, ma'am. <laughs> okay. These lamentations of the goddesses were heard by Ra. Wow, I don't even know why I'm so emotional right now. And he sent them once again on Pooh who with the assistance of Tehuti and Ra reunited the dismembered body of Asar, wrapped it in linen bandages and mummified it. Tehuti, Aset, and Heru performed upon the mummy the ceremony of opening the mouth and Asar was brought back to life through the gift of the eye of Heru, which Set had destroyed, but healed by Tehu, but was healed by Tehuti, brought back to life. He was declared the judge and king of the dead, while Heru was to take his place as king of the living. Set objected. He publicly complained, according to one account, that Heru was a bastard and could not thus be the legitimate heir to the throne. According to another account, he staked his claim to the throne on the basis that he was the strongest in the world. Might, he argued, was the chief virtue of government. He also brought charges contesting the position of Alsar. <laughs> Although Set, now emasculated, could have easily been disposed of by Heru through force, righteousness returned to the land with the return of Asar, and Set was given his day in courts. A great tribunal made up of 42 gods with Tim as leader and Tehuti as judge was assembled. As Set's government was based on might and pure deception where force could not be openly applied, his words were found to be untrue. It was shown that in most instances he contradicted and violated the laws he imposed on others. <laughs> on the other side, Asar and Heru had been shown to have lived by the laws they promulgated. Thus, they were found to be Ma'ak Heru, true of word. Thus, the great quarrel was settled on the basis of right over might. The night in which this great verdict was awarded is known in the committed spiritual tradition as Ker Wacha Metu, Wachau Metu, Knight of Wayne Words, Set was sentenced to serve as the wind that propelled the boat of Asar. <laughs> okay, let's read the commentary. My phone is just doing the job. Okay, let's see. To understand Heru's resurrection of Asar by giving him his eye. Oh, let's see. I, I got a whole lot to read here. Let's go back. It came about through the victory of righteousness. Tehuti gave off set the cow's head to show that she was merely following an, an instruction from above. Cows don't lead the pack. This was another reminder to Heru. The will of man is in need of such constant reminders to be humble. It is not enough to defeat evil. God's rulership of the life of the individual and nation must be restored. Aset's chant defines what devotion to God is. One must love God more than anything else in the world. In Aset's stage of initiation, in the Aset stage of initiation, devotion to God is expressed by the experiencing of sorrow for engaging in the sinful acts that prevent the indwelling divinity from rising to the foreground of our lives. Okay, Nebet Het's chant emphasizes the joy of awakening the indwelling God. This is the theme of the Het Heru stage of initiation. As king and judge of the underworld meant that Asar is to rule over the subconscious, while Heru, the will, is to rule over the waking state. Yet, it must be understood that the will must receive its direction from the indwelling divinity, Asar. This relationship is duplicated in the divine kingship throughout traditional Africa, from ancient Egypt to present-day African nations in which the kingship is still alive, Ashanti, Yoruba, etc. 
To understand Heru's resurrection of Osar by giving him his eye, we must recall the role of the eye as symbol of God's omnipresence. As king of the external world, the waking state, Heru acts as Osar's means of perceiving what is going on in the world. Thus, he is able to direct the life of the individual and nation. Take note that the resurrection of Osar is the source of the second coming of Christ. Okay, We see this today in secularism, said objective. The claim to be a legitimate guide to man's life in the world. It is particularly setian. It is a particular setting and maneuver to bring charges against others invoking laws that they themselves do not observe. Okay? Hypocrisy. It also prophesizes that the Setians will challenge the heirs of Egypt, present-day Africans and African Americans, when they reclaim their Kemetic heritage. Hmm. This shows the way to victory over the power that be, force them to become 100% accountable to the laws and values they proclaim. Okay, In the Kemetic tradition, the wind is symbolic of both the motive force and the left side of the brain mental activity that gives us technological advancement. The set was sentenced to broadcast the Osarian religion around the galaxies. <laughs> okay, my people, I made it. I got it in, okay? There's a summary to it. I'm going to have to do the summary somewhere else, okay, on another video. All right, my people, peace and blessings. That's to give us the understanding of the entirety of the metaphorian, the, the myth, okay? It's, it's like the Bible story of what the whole religion stands for, okay? It's a huge metaphor, okay? And it breaks down the understanding in in poetic way. In, you know, it's like a drama. It's like watching a TV show, okay? <laughs> it's beautiful. It's poetic. It's dramatic. It's like Shakespeare, but it's better. All right. With this kind of breakdown of the whole thing, you understand it, okay? And you're gonna grasp it really well. That's why uh, people love drama stories, okay? They can train you to believe in a whole lot of stuff that's not beneficial to you through drama. That's why there's so many TV shows, so many dramas, okay? So many dramas because it's just we are attracted to it. But anyway, my people, I got to end this video. I got two videos to upload now. All right, peace and blessings. I'm going to come back with a lot more. That was just the, the breakdown, the beginning breakdown of it. So we got to know what we're doing and why, okay? Peace and love.